That's serviceable. And now you can automate that print request. But until you have this, you can't. So, I uh, pick up a little bit of ink. Uh, we don't know how to make linseed oil in the colonies either. We have to buy that from England. Carbon black and uh, pine best are most of the other two ingredients we have abundance of. For every sheet of paper you lay on the press, you have to ink it. So, we print 2,000 full sheets a day. Can you imagine doing this for 350 years? No. By the end of the day, we'll print 2,000 sheets and we'll lose about 4,000 miles. And we're, we're breaking up with England right now, printing the Boston edition of the Declaration of Independence. <laughs> wow. Beautiful. This is the founding document of the United States. And the truth is, um, if we didn't do this, we're not going to get any help. England is the most powerful, largest empire on Earth. They have the largest army and the largest navy. The Americans have nothing. Unfortunately, it's a key enemy of England that we party up with, we pair up with, and help with France. They start sending us money once we do this. Actually, all of Europe wants to do business with these colonies, but they can't. Uh, we, if a ship comes into New England, it comes from London or somewhere in England. We're not, the ships aren't allowed to just come into American ports, and we're not allowed to send our ships anywhere but the England. Right? So trade is being constrained, but we buy half of everything exported out of England, about $5 million worth a year. And so Holland, the Dutch, the Spanish, the French, everybody wants to trade with these colonies. We're doubling our population every 16 years. And we have such a vast amount of resources that are in high demand in the 18th century that, you know, they're, they're all itching to do business with us, but they can't. Now they can. And so this declaration kind of opens up that door that says we're ready for foreign investment. And um, a couple countries can come to our aid. So, this is the Boston edition of the Declaration of Independence. It's no different than the Philadelphia edition or than the edition that was written some three weeks later and when you see the movie National Treasure. <laughs> I said that one day about the movie National Treasure, and this lady starts poking her husband. Go ahead, tell him. Tell me what I said. He said, uh, he said I produced the movie National Treasure. I think I didn't get the movie. Uh, but this was written the third week of July and not signed until August 2nd. So it's kind of a, this is like our Magna Carta, I guess, kind of a handwritten version of an official document. But um, these are printed all over the colonies. There's 12 different broadsides. If you happen to find one of those, like some guy did about five years ago, in the back of a $4 picture frame he bought, they're worth $10 million. These being more rare but not as valuable, about $700,000. I had a guy in here that bought one of those for $10 million about a month ago. He bought a Magna Carta for $25 million. Sure. He might be a billionaire. Well, if you're not a billionaire, I sell mine for $17.76. I think that's a pretty good deal. Uh, along with the donation barrel and the other things I sell there, that's how I fund this shop. So, my name's Gary, I'm the owner of the shop. I'd be pleased to answer any questions. Thank you, Gary. Thank you. Thank you. How long would it take to put all the pieces? About seven hours. So it's amazing. We'll spend seven hours setting the type. You might print that for an hour. Print 250 sheets in an hour. And then you take it outside, wash it off the wide. Rinse it off and put it back into the bag. You set the letters. Thanks for people setting type. What are you machines doing? Labor sheet materials are expensive. Yes. Yeah. No. Um, this is, uh, I got this in Mainz at the Gutenberg Museum. So, uh, this is page one of Genesis from the Gutenberg Bible. Um, they're printing them in Mainz. But this illumination would have been done by hand, of course. Gutenberg did try. He attempted to do some version of this on the press. The problem is registration. He doesn't have to use it. With his press or whatever knowledge, I mean, he's the first guy that's doing this, uh, did not have the ability to register it to make it, to do it accurately. So not all Gutenberg Bibles are illuminated. Only if you could, I guess the book was expected enough that if you wanted to have it done, um, you would have had to pay somebody, and not everybody did that. It's a stunning print job, 1455. Really. And then if you think about it, for the first time in the history of mankind, page one of Genesis on the first Bible is exactly like page one of Genesis on the 180th Bible. 
before that, they're writing them with a quill pen. How long do you think that takes? Write a whole Bible with one of these. Very close, one year. One year. So uh, the church was highly, was very interested in the invention of the printing press. It turns out if you talk to the United States Patent Office, they'll tell you that the same exact idea comes to four people in the world in exactly the same way. Any idea. If it's, if it's in inventing the, the transmission for an automobile, it doesn't matter. It apparently, because they know, because people file patents. And they'll see people in very diverse places working on exactly the same idea. In The Hague, uh, there was a guy working on it, a Dutchman working on the printing press in exactly the same moment that Gutenberg was. With essentially the same invention. Gutenberg, just through court cases, wins out in the history game because we find out that he printed first. But, but the Dutch become the most, the best, most uh, correct printers of the 16th, 17th, 18th centuries. So for the declarations that you sell for $17, do you print all of them?